All right, here it is, Monday. It's already 11.05. So I guess this is gonna be your late afternoon treadmill motivation for you. you. Got a late start today, but that's all right. It was well worth it, let me tell you. But hey, welcome you guys. This is Eminem. This is your boy Eminem with your Monday's version of treadmill motivation. And like I had said on Friday, we're talking about first natural and spiritual. Well, guess what? It's spiritual time. And this is a part of your life that you really, really need. Hey, Betty, what's going on? This is a part of your life that what we're going to talk about this week is very imperative for the balance of your natural side and your spiritual side. So, just like I stated, my discipline habits suck. I'm just being real. Just let's just be 100. You know, you can you can fake it if you want to. You know, they say fake it till you make it. Nah, can't do that right now. It's all about being real as far as what God has given me to give you. Now, like I say all the time, you that are not spiritual, hang in with me for a little while because if you eat the whole chicken and spit out the bones, there might be something that you can use. Might not. Hey, it's all open. It's all free, right? It's all free will. I uh, ain't nobody forcing you to be here, but I do appreciate you being here. And like I say every, every day, every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, share it. Share it with your friends. Share it with your loved ones. Share with those that you really don't like. If it's a way of motivating them in a way that they can come up a little bit from their negative world, it's a great thing. So what am I going to be talking about today? Today I want to share with you something that I feel is, is very beneficial, not only to myself, but to others as well. Like I say, you don't have to listen, but I do appreciate you being here. Five life-changing spiritual disciplines. That's what I'm going to talk about. Five life-changing spiritual disciplines. So, get your notepad, get your pencils, let's roll with it. Do you have your workout gear on? you have your tennis shoes on? Are you ready? Well, I hope so, because I'm already sweating. Now, don't trip about my, my dome cover, okay, because it says New York, right? This is just to keep the heat in to help me sweat more. That's all, just my dome cover. So don't, don't, don't be all tripping because I can wear New York. But those of you that love New York, right on. All right, now, five life-changing spiritual disciplines. Because like I say, my discipline habits suck and they need to get better. And this is one way that God is helping me to better my discipline habits is this form that he's given given us Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And I really appreciate, you know, like I say, you sacrificing some time to watch me, listen to me, share it with some your friends that might need this, that can build them up, that can encourage them where they are in their lives. And that's all this is for. So, you know, it's like at the start of every year, when we started 2017, I'm sure you've heard, just like I've heard, a lot of people make New Year's resolutions. I don't even make those anymore. I feel this is a waste of my time because when you really think about it, people that make res New Year's resolutions, how often do they really stick with it? But that's not a slight on them. They, 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 their intentions are good, but it's like every New Year resolution starts out with a, a new exercise regimen, right? Or a new book reading plan. Those that are in the church, what's the first thing they do? I'm gonna read through the Bible. And they have this 365 day Bible reading plan, <laughs> and they're just like, hey, I'm going to read through the Bible. But that, that's, like I say, their intentions are good. So they might start new exercise regimens, they might start a new uh, book reading um, plan, or anything else that they want to change for their life at the beginning of a year. You know, my thing is, why wait until the beginning of the year, start where you are right now? Because what happens is, with all this stuff that they're boasting about, all these New Year's resolutions, it's like they want to make your life exponentially better in the coming year. That's all these New Year's resolutions proclaim to do. However, it's like this. 
after a few weeks, after a few weeks, what happens, people have that have good intentions about these New Year's resolutions, they already have given up. They've already made the decision like, you know what, this ain't worth it. And I'm, I'm like, I don't feel like reading tomorrow. I don't feel like going to my exercise class. I don't feel like getting up exercising. Now, they've already defeated themselves in the first few weeks of the new year. Seriously? Come on. But here's what I want you to understand. Just because you might feel like giving up, don't give up. Just hang in there. You know, this we talking about the spiritual habits today, so we're going to get spiritual today, all right? Because this is for me as well. So it's like a few short weeks after they, they state their New Year's resolution, they settle back into the old way of life. They settle back into their old normal routine of life. A few short weeks. There's nothing wrong with with these goals. There's nothing wrong with wanting a new exercise regimen. Hey, look at me. Every every day I'm on this treadmill because this is about my health. This is about my well-being. This is something that I've committed to. You know, it not only helps me naturally, but it also helps me spiritually. You know, God calls the young because they're strong. I feel like I'm still young. But look, one cannot help but to think about some of the other types of disciplines that will make you more meaningful and different to an eternity. There's a lot of meaningful um, disciplines that you can do that can help you in the eternity, okay? While spiritual disciplines is often overlooked, and, and a lot of people, they overlook the spiritual discipline of life. You know, they're Christians, they're, they're godly, they, they try to do whatever they think is best for them spiritually but to be honest we miss the mark in a lot of a lot of areas of our lives I know I do that's why I say that my disciplinary habits they suck but every day I'm trying to get better every day I'm trying to better myself you know naturally and spiritually but being that these spiritual disciplines are overlooked it is an extremely important part of Christ Jesus's character was spiritual disciplines that was, that was his, his makeup, his characteristics was about spiritual disciplines. Now, Jesus modeled a consistent pattern of spiritual disciplines. Because during his earthly ministry, what's up Dwayne, what's going on? During his earthly ministry, Jesus, who was God, had to be disciplined. And people say, well, you know, I'm not going to get into all, all the theological and, and all the rest of that because this isn't a time for that. You know, you can catch me on some other some other channel. We can get into the theology of Jesus being God and God being Jesus and man and all that, the triuneness of that. That it's not today's not it. But he still had to have a disciplined life even in man form. So Jesus basically if he was spiritually disciplined on earth, what about us, his children, we that are mortal? What about us? You know, we need to be spiritually disciplined. So what am I talking about today? Five life-changing spiritual discipline habits that we can do to help better us every day. Now, today, we will embrace some of the five discipline habits of a Christian's life. And there's a book called Spiritual Discipline. What the cool thought all? Como estas, amigo? Uh, there are, there's, a, there's an awesome book that you can look up. Kev, what's up, man? Awesome book called Spiritual Disciplines. Awesome book. Look that up. It was one of the books I read in college. Um, the, the author escapes me right now. Well, I apologize for that, but I'll get that to you. But today we want to we wanna embrace uh, five spiritual disciplines that will truly change your lives if you commit to them consistently and that's that's the key is committing to something consistently it's water break time all right like i've been on here a little while so that's why i'm already winded y'all just got to catch up now the key element in a commitment that is consistent 
in a spiritual disciplined life. Discipline number one out of the five. Number one is prayer. Now, what I'm about to give you, it is not new. It's been around for centuries. You've heard it from your own pastors. You've heard it from your own uh, friends that prayer is important to a person's life. Prayer is essential for a Christian's life. You always hear prayer. My mom will always tell me prayer changes things, son. Prayer changes things. Well, I had to grow up and learn that as a truth because yes, prayer definitely changes the outcome of your situation, but you have to consistently be consistent with this part of your spiritual discipline. Luke 9.28, the B, the B clause through the 29th verse, and this is NIV, he says, he took Peter, James, and John. What up? What up? How you doing? He took Peter, James, and John and went up to the mountain to do what? They went up to pray, at least he did. He just brought some of his fellas along with him so they can see what his lifestyle was. You know, it's one thing having fellas following you around, being your entourage, but it's another teaching your fellas how to pray. It's another teaching your boys and your girls your prayer life. You know, if they wanna hang around with you, that's fine. But what are you teaching them or what are you learning from them? Number one in a spiritual discipline life is prayer. That's important for every Christian to understand this. He said that as he was praying, this is Jesus, as he was praying, the appearance of his face changed. The appearance of Jesus' face changed. And his clothes became bright as a flash of lightning. This was on the mount they call the Mount of Transfiguration. You can read it for yourself. Like I say, this ain't about all this, this deep Bible study today. I'm just motivating you on five life-changing spiritual disciplines. Last week we talked the natural. This week we talked in spiritual. Because it's important to have that balance. Now, while Jesus was praying, his countenance changed. His face changed. His clothes changed. His, his whole countenance changed became totally different from what they were used to being around with him on a natural sense. According to what we just read here in, in Luke 9, you can read 928, but start with the B clause of that, 928 and 29. We see here in scriptures that prayer basically and ultimately changes our outlook. Woo! Now that's real. Those of you that pray, you understand this. Those of you that have a fervent prayer life, you know exactly what I'm talking about. But those of you that's new to this concept, it's a whole different ballpark. What's up, Miriam? It's a whole different thing because now you're, you're trying to understand, well, what is this pray thing? What is this prayer life that you're talking about? How is this going to help me in my life? Well, if you hang with me, you'll find out. Now, not only did his countenance change and his characteristic change, what an amazing moment in this particular scripture this particular, this particular scripture and pastor portrays, it says, as Jesus was praying, he transfigures, he changes. I hope you're hearing this because there's, a, there's an underline in this that is very, very, very serious. What's up? It's all good. Talking about five life-changing spiritual disciplines today. Jesus prayed and he transfigured, he changed right there in front of his boys, Peter, James, and John. They were like, whoa, what the heck? I'm sure they probably just say that, we don't know. You know, we just know what was going in the Bible, that's my version. We're like, yo, man, what happened? What's going on? You know, his face is changing, his, his, his apparel is like bright as the noonday sun. Oh man, what's happening? But Jesus didn't change his clothes. What's up, Cynthia? He didn't change his clothes with the wave of a magic wand, no. But their perception, the disciples' perception of Jesus is changing. <laughs> it, it, it changed their whole life. You know, the, the perception of his appearance changed the moment he prayed. Did you hear me? Their perception, the disciples' perception of his appearance changed the very moment he prayed. The very moment you start praying. The very moment you get down and you start seeking 
God for help, you change. Just like with Jesus in the, on the Mount of Transfiguration over in Luke 9, 928, 29. Everything about you is going to change because now you're seeking something from God that you really need. You know, most times people, it's a shame they don't get down to pray until they got a problem. Most times people don't get down to pray and seek God until they need a raise on their job. Sometimes people don't get down to pray until there's an issue. No, it shouldn't be like that. Prayer should be a regular part of your life. It's a spiritual discipline habit that should be a part of every Christian person's life every day just as much as you eat every day you should pray every day now listen I told you I'm not I'm not getting on you I'm not I'm not your pastor however me being a man of God I'm just sharing some some heartfelt um, instructions that was placed within me to share with you on this treadmill motivation am I making excuses no heck no this is just, I'm just giving you my disclaimer. Now listen, as Jesus was praying, he transfigured right there in front of his boys. Right there in front of his boys. This wasn't done through a magic trick. This wasn't the waving of a magic wand. No, I've heard a lot of people believe what they say, what they perceive they believe, right? What they believe they perceive, they perceive what they believe. You know, I've heard that a lot in the same way when we pray, Change is inevitable. Did you hear me? When we pray, change is inevitable. Just like Jesus changed, the moment he started to pray, change when you pray is inevitable. The conditions that we're in when we get down to pray may not change as quick as Jesus' appearance change. So don't get it twisted. Just because you get down to pray, things are going to things are going to materialize like this. No, it don't work like that. Sometimes they do. Now, I'm going to put that little side note. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. It just depends on what and where you are in your life with Christ and what needs to be learned. Yeah, yeah there's, a lot of, there's a lot of underlying in there. But the circumstances will probably remain the same. However, prayer changes how you respond to the crisis. My mom would always say, prayer changes things. Prayer changes your response to the crisis, okay? Without prayer, nothing transfigures. Nothing changes. Did you hear me? I know you heard me. Without prayer, nothing transfigures and nothing changes. Read it. Go back to Luke 9, 28, the B clause. As soon as Jesus prayed, his face changed, his clothes changed, as bright as lightning. When you get down to pray, your response to the crisis will change because now you're not worried about what the crises are when you got down to pray. You're not worried about whether people like you or not. You're not worried about all the negative surrounding that you're in. You're not worried about that because now you are in the center or in the circumference of your prayer room or your war closet, your war room. Does everybody have a war room? I hope so. Wherever your war room is, that's where you go in and you strategize. And that's where, where battles are fought and won right there in your prayer room, right there in your war room. That's why we have war rooms, so we can go in and strategize with the general. I say, all right, this is, this is the plan, this is the layout, this is the crisis. You know, I'm giving it to you, God. You already can work this out. I know you've already worked it out. I know you already, you've planned my life. So, without prayer, nothing transfigures, nothing changes. This is why it's important, number one, in your five life-changing uh, spiritual disciplines, you need to pray. Number one. All right, what's number two? Hope you're writing this down. You might have to go back and, and review this. And like I say, share it with your friends. Share it with your loved ones. Share it now. Let them know that Malachi is on talking about the five life-changing spiritual disciplines in our, in our lives that we need to have that can totally revolutionize our lives as a Christian. Even non-Christians. Here, let me give you a little side note. And now I know I'm going to lose some of y'all, but that's okay. That's all right. 
That's okay. Yes, number one is prayer. Now, you can look this up in the Bible, and I'm one that I don't back down from a pretty good fight, okay? Number one, in dealing with prayer, God does not hear a sinner's prayer. Uh, let me let that, let that sink in, because I know y'all is like, what? What did he just say? The only time God hears a sinner's prayer is once that sinner repents. Then he, see, then he hears them. Now you've broken the seal to reach heaven. People say that are not Christians, that are not believers, and they talk about how they pray. I'm like, well, your prayers aren't going any further than your ceiling. But once you ask God to forgive you, that breaks your ceiling, and your prayer now can reach heaven. Now God will pay attention to you. It's a conditional thing. Don't think because you're out there doing whatever you want to do outside of God's will and then all of a sudden you get down to pray uh, there's a little problem there he only hears his children and the only time that you're a child of God is if you've asked for forgiveness and asked him into your heart as your personal savior now I know like I said that's tearing a whole bunch of people's theology right now far as out in the world but that's okay we learn to do better you can look it up in the bible you don't have to believe me i don't even want you to believe me go to the bible and read it yourself research it find out don't take my word you don't have to take my word i don't even want you to take my word go and read it for yourself then you'll know for yourself now number two number two is fasting and it's five <laughs> microwave prayers yeah i know about them won it yesterday thank you dude i'm gone praise god i'm gone no that's a microwave prayer we need to get out of that habit too thank you for that listen but number two is fasting fasting five life-changing spiritual disciplines number two is fasting matthews 4 1 and 2 says then jesus was led by the spirit Oh, I hope you hear the undergird here. Man, there's so many nuggets just in that. Then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the desert to be tempted of the devil. Jesus was. After fasting 40 days and 40 nights, the Bible says he was hungry. Now, many of us that have never fasted, or we've tried to fast, you know what it's like. Day one, you think you're gonna pass out. You're so hungry. That's why before you go on a fast, and this is something that I had to learn, you have to condition your mind, your heart, your spirit, and especially your body in order to go on any kind of fast. You don't go on a fast because you want a new car. You don't go on a fast because you want a new house. You go on a fast because you want to get closer to God spiritually. You want a, an, um, a, a turn up, as they say, or a shake up in your spiritual life. It's to strengthen you, to allow you to hear God in the spiritual realm. That's why you fast, okay? Why do you eat? To nourish your bodies, to strengthen your body, to give you strength, right? Same thing with fasting and praying. It's coupled together. Now listen. Of the five disciples, this is my perception, of the five disciples, I perceive that fasting may be the most challenging. Did I say disciples? I meant disciplines. Out of the five disciplines, not disciples, excuse me, but the five disciplines that we're talking about, one of the most challenging of this is fasting. It is, because the body is now coming under attack I'm like wait you're not feeding me that cheeseburger today oh I'm about to rack your stomach up <laughs> you're not gonna have that that them french fries from McDonald's large oh I'm about to really mess with you today but that's the way it is when I when I uh, was seeking God about you know my relationships when I was seeking God about my next relationship before I even got into a relationship I wanted to hear from God. 
not man, not my family, not my friends. I wanted to hear from God to know, to have an assurance that the direction that I was going was the correct one for me and my family, okay? For me, because I'm the only one here. I have a 14 year old that me and her mom, we share custody, but most of the time I'm here by myself. So this is about me, okay? Right now, it's not a selfish thing, but then again, it is a selfish thing because it, it relates to my salvation. You can, be, you can be selfish with your salvation, okay? But the moment that I felt led, people say, well, you felt led the last three, four, five times. You know, have you ever seen fake gold, fool's gold? Well, you know what? There's a spiritual fool's gold that you can go through when you really think it's God, but you, you're not in a right place anyway. And then all of a sudden you get this win that, oh, is she the one? Well, you're going to jump on it. Well, that's what I did. That's part of my story. Okay. But I didn't want that to happen this time. So before I, like I said, before I started seeking, I went on three different fasts. Now this, this ain't for the weak at heart. One, I prayed and asked God, okay, God, I'm about to go on this fast. And this is the conditions that I made with God. So you have to make some conditions. You know, it's like writing a goal. It's like writing your dreams down. You have to have some type of spiritual goal in order to reach God in a way that, okay, you're serious about this, huh? Yeah, yes, God, I am. So I laid out the condition. I laid out what I desired. And then once I prayed about it, then he led me by the spirit to go on three different fasts okay the first fast was for five days the second fast was for seven days then the third fast and we do things in threes the father son and the holy spirit right the third fast was a 21 day fast half of it was just water the second half you know the second half of it was uh, a Daniel's fast, so it was nothing but vegetables, you know, purifying the body. That's, it was a Daniel's fast, vegetables and nuts and stuff like that. But what I gained from that was a deeper level of love from God, a deeper spiritual level for his presence in my life. And he allowed me to hear his voice in such a clear way because one, my natural man wasn't, wasn't hindering me because I was hungry or I was eating and I was full and I was sleepy, didn't feel like praying, no. The body was already conditioned for this hardcore fast that, I, that he put me on. You just don't, you know, you just don't get on a fast for 21 days on your own. You gotta prepare yourself. You feel like the Spirit of the Lord has to lead you just like Jesus was led into the wilderness. You gotta be led in all things of your life, be led by the Spirit of God. Just don't do it on your own accord. This is something that I had to learn. So, my treadmill stops, so you know what that means. Trail for motivation for the day has come to an end. But let me finish my thought. <laughs> let me finish my thought, and then we'll take up where we left off. You know what? I think I'm going to finish number two, and then we'll go on to number three on Wednesday. So, just to, to be fair with you, all right? So, I'll start this again. So I can continue to sweat. <laughs> Might as well work it out, right? Okay, now, so after that 21 day fast, I heard clearly, I could hear clearly, I could see clearly, because now I'm looking, <laughs> yes, I'm looking through the eyes of God now. I'm looking through a spiritual mindset now, not the natural side of me. That's where your friends, they don't understand that once you start laying before God, you all of a sudden, you know, you don't come around as much. You don't call them as much. You know, they don't they don't see you as much. And they're trying to figure out, well, where old boy go? Where old girl go? I don't see them much. It's because now you're filling up your time with the spiritual things of God. Now you're setting your time to God's time and not man's time and not your friend's time. And then when they see you the next time, just like when the disciples saw Jesus' appearance change, they look at you and go, Something's different about you. Your whole radiance is changed. You, you just got this glow about you. You know, if it's women, they say, are you pregnant? No, I'm pregnant with the spirit of God, yes. You know, 
And then your fellas be like, yo, man, you look like a like you been you high, man. What's, you look high, bruh. What you been doing? I've been getting high on the spirit of God. That's what I've been doing. Okay? So like I said, after the 21 days, I started hearing what God was saying. And that's when Christine came into view. See, a lot of people don't know my story. There's always a backside of the, the success story. You know, you guys are now seeing, you know, what we post on Facebook and you know how the love, a lot of people don't even believe that. No, oh, there ain't that much in love. Well, maybe it's because of the condition that you're in right now. And then they say, well, it ain't gonna last. That's okay, don't even worry about all that. I'm not, you know, as long as you're doing what God has approved you to do, everything else is secondary. So after that 21 day fast, I can see, I can hear, and I can feel in a whole different way. It's always all spiritual then. Because now my whole mindset was spiritual. And that's when she came into view. And that's when we started a friendship. And then after that, you know, it moved so quickly because the Spirit of God was just dealing with me in such a way like none other. And that's something that you have to believe for yourself. Whether people believe it for you or not, you have to believe it. That there's a change. And when you come back to your friends and people see your change, they don't see what God has done to you and for you in your war room. But you have to live it in front of them. Teach people how you want them to treat you. So, how do you do that? How do I do that? I continue down the road that God has prepared for me. I don't argue anymore. I don't fuss about it. I don't even post all that negative stuff I used to post about people talking about me on Facebook. I stopped all that. Start letting them see what God has changed you in. The lifestyle change. Your conversation change. Your dress change. Right? Your whole outlook on life changed. So now, you know, they're looking at you like, oh, you just holier than thou, ain't you? Well, if that's what it takes for me to get to heaven, I believe I am. So, but you live the life in front of them. You be the witness. So what you're doing now, because they're so wrapped on your past and they're so wrapped on what you used to do, now you come around, they, they're like, all they can talk about is what you used to do. Okay? Yeah, fasting is addicting. You know, if you, can, if you consistently fast, it is addicting, just like anything else. But that's a good addiction. You know, one, it makes you lose weight. Two, it spiritually builds you up. So, now, with that, after we started developing our relationship and God started moving us in a way into our purpose, that's when we decide, okay, you know what? That's when I decided, okay, God, is this a good time for me to propose? It was like, gave me the triple C, triple, triple A seal. He appointed it, he anointed it, and he approved it. Done deal. Enough said, right? But that's where you have to be in life. Whatever it is in life, seek God. Be led by his spirit. And then seek for his triple A approval. Triple A standard, the stamp of approval. Triple A. Uh, he approved it. He, he anointed it. And what is it? <laughs> I just went blank. <laughs> Must be the age, right? Anointed, appointed, and approved. That's what it is. Triple A. Oh boy. But listen, let me finish this. Before Jesus started his public ministry, he spent 40 days and 40 nights with the Lord, or with his Father. He spent it fasting. 40 days and 40 nights. The longest fast I've gone in my life was 30 days. 30 days. Now, see? That's one that most people, they were like, oh, I ain't trying to do that. I'll be no passed out. Well, if God has commissioned you to fast, you're not going to pass out. You're not even going to be hungry. I wasn't even hungry for those 30 days, right? Because my mind was conditioned, my heart was conditioned, my spirit was conditioned. Because God was the one that orchestrated the fast. And I wasn't fasting for a new house. I wasn't fasting for a new car. I was fasting because I wanted to hear from God even more so. All right, listen, like I said, the most challenging part of this five life-changing spiritual disciplines is definitely fasting. But here, food is indeed a gift from God. I know I can get some amens there. Food is definitely a gift from God. Those taste buds just go wild. For my favorite, carrot cake. Mm, mm, mm. So I know that food is a gift from God. He provided it for our replenishment, but not our disminishment. Did you get that? 
wizard is for our replenishment, but not our diminishment. Diminishment. You figured out. <laughs> Whenever food messes up our faith, there is indeed a problem. Because now food is directing our path instead of the spirit man. Whenever the obsession to satisfy our stomachs becomes greater than our need to satisfy our savior, then God leaves it up to a fast. He says, well, I think it's time for you to fast. But we need to hear that spirit. We need to be in a place to hear it like number one, praying. That's the only way you're gonna be able to hear it. God say it's time for you to fast because what you're allowing to satisfy you is not what I want to satisfy you. You lost your love for me. You've lost your love for the Savior to satisfy you. So there are a number of ways to fast and various types of fast. For instance, fasting from social media. Yeah, how about that? Fasting from social media. Some people, you know, they, they like, they, people think I'm stuck on social media. I'm like, uh, I beg to differ. You know, one, it's a part of my style of ministry, you know, is posting certain things that will, you know, benefit, that will bless, that will uplift and encourage. You know, I ain't up here gossiping. You know, I ain't telling you what I ate, you know, unless I'm yelping, and then you'll see where we're at yelping, and then I'm writing an article on yelping about the food, but I'm not telling you, you know, oh, I'm having some french fries from McDonald's. There's a special today on nuggets. Yeah, what? Whatever. Who cares? You know? <laughs> so people just need to be fasting off of social media. What's the other? People need to fast from the internet. Now, many of you that have jobs, you know, you need the internet nowadays. And uh, Bill Gates once said, there's going to be two types of business. Internet business and out of business. Now, Bill Gates said it and he is the richest man in the world. I tend to believe on that spectrum, what he says, two types of business there's gonna be. Internet business and out of business. Which one are you gonna be in? Now, what's the other we need to fast from? Well, in some people's cases, sex. And any activity that brings gratification and satisfaction. Because now you're, satisfied, you're satisfying and gratifying the body and the flesh, however, we will only focus today and this week on fasting from food because it is generally the most common type of fast and it's the type of fast that Jesus practiced. Jesus practiced fasting, okay? Now, let me say this. Let's set the record straight about fasting. Some of you that's, that's in leadership, that's preaching, that have been preaching, let, let a young fella school you that might not know it. Fasting was not a commandment. Jesus did not command anyone to fast. So stop commanding your people to fast. I'll let, I'll, I'll let you marinate on that. It was not a commandment from Jesus. Jesus did not say, I command you to fast. Now, fill it, fill this if you will. Because it wasn't a commandment. Fasting was not a command nor a commandment. Jesus told his disciples, when you fast, not if you fast, or I want you to fast. Matthew 6, 16, look it up. Write that down, look it up. Matthew 6, 16. Jesus said, in quotations, quote unquote, when you fast, now, it is if not, not if, okay, not you're going to. He seems to take, take it for granted that his disciples will fast. See, there's, you know, like you want somebody to do something, take it for granted and say it in a way that people will act on it. So it was like Jesus was taking it for granted that his disciples will fast as much as he assumes by his when you do a charitable deed or when you pray 
that they would be men of giving and prayer. So he was already assuming that this was going to be a part of their life. When you give to charitable deeds, when you pray, now what you've done, you've moved into a, a lifestyle of giving and a lifestyle of prayer. Now, I tend to believe that Jesus was teaching a group of people at this time who com commonly practiced fasting. Who were that? That were the Pharisees. So while Jesus was talking about it, he made a point. He was always teaching. It was like, okay, when you fast, don't be like these knuckleheads over here. Don't be like these busters over here, these Pharisees, right? He says, don't look solemn. Don't look slumberish. Wash your face, brush your teeth. Put some clothes on, put some cologne on when you're fasting. People don't need to know you're fasting, but you got crust all around your mouth, your breath stank, right? Hair all over the place, oh, I'm fasting, I'm fasting. Ain't nobody want be like, dang, really? If that's what it's about, I ain't trying to fast. So Jesus was letting them know, and he was teaching a group of people that practiced fasting. So the Pharisees and many of the Jews had a part of their week where they would fast. So, although Jesus said when you fast, he does not say you must fast. Let's hear that. Jesus never commanded fasting. I'll say it again. He did not say, get a little windy and look at my time here. He did not say you shall fast. Jesus never did that. But he did expect, oh, there it is right there. He did expect that members of the kingdom of God would practice fasting. Should we as Christians fast? I think so. I think so. And I think I'm going to put a pin right there for today. Number one, five life-changing spiritual disciplines that you can have in your life. Number one, prayer. Number two, fasting. So it's very important for you to understand those two concepts, but in actuality, fasting and praying, they go hand in hand. They're coupled together. All right? Yo, Steven, coming down to a close, brother. You have to catch the replay. Good to see you, man. So with that, like I say, this is your boy Eminem. It's been a plum pleasing pleasure, as Les Brown would say, to be able to come on and share with you what God has given me for this week. Like I said, this ain't no, no Bible study, but we are studying a few things from the Bible. All right, you get Bible study at church. That's nice, you know, you get enough Bible study. You know, not in a negative way, but you know, you get your own Bible study, you get enough. So, but while we're together, is to motivate you in this treadmill motivation session to exercise your body and for me to feed the spiritual mind and the spiritual man of your inner being. That's all I'm trying to do. You can like it or you can dislike it. You're totally in your right. I just praise God that you're here and you're sharing this few moments with me and you'll share it with your friends, you'll share it with your loved ones, and you'll even share it with those people that you don't even like. All right? Again, this is your boy Eminem. I want to say what up to all you out there. Say hello to my baby girl, Christine. Love you, baby. Have a wonderful day, you guys. Love God. Love yourself. And by all means, love others. Live, hope, and change. That's the motto. This is, look at I'm so windy. People say, you ain't even running. You don't need to run. If your program is, is selected right, you'll get enough wind and you'll get enough exercise where I'm sweating. I don't need to run, you know, 100 miles an hour in order to say I'm working out. I've walked and I'm already winded. I've lost a lot of calories today. But that's the important part of treadmill motivation is getting you motivated to, to get exercise. Get motivated to motivate your mind. Once you try this, you will never want to stop. Whole different level. You, you write. It's a whole different level. A whole mindset has to change in your life in order to be successful and that's what this is all about so i appreciate you guys being here with me hey look forward to seeing you on wednesday you know you ready let's kick this thing up go back to the next 
uh, closing part of this five life-changing spiritual discipline habits that we need to have in our lives. Even those that aren't believers can benefit from this. Have a great day. I pray for you that your day will be successful, that your night will be even better, that God will continue to walk with you. And those of you that are out of the ark of safety, I pray that you come back into the ark of safety under God's covering. I pray that something that I say will touch you in a way that you will say, just like those in the Bible says, what must I do to be saved in Acts 2? What must I do? Because in the end, we all want to see Jesus in peace. Whether you believe it or not, it's totally up to you. And it's, 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 it's your free will. I'm not going to browbeat you. I'm not going to beat you up with the word. I'm going to love you. Because the Bible says, with love and kindness, have I drawn thee. And that's all I'm trying to do is draw a few of you into the kingdom. So if you've learned something today, share it with your friends, share it with your loved ones, share it with your enemies. God bless you. I appreciate you. And we'll see you real soon.